This short film builds on the research of previous work. For foundational materials, please Google Jacqueline Widmar Stewart for books, websites, and YouTube films. Hidden Tributes to Women Miraculously, Celts have been able to convey to us some of their homage to heroes, despite being subjugated and having their existence denied for centuries. Through context, subject matter, and manner of display, sometimes their messages can be deciphered. Why does this matter? It matters because we need to know the truth. The history we've been taught is so laced with misinformation that it endangers us today. Dictators have spun stories to keep themselves in power, and religion has been integral to this deception. To protect our freedom, we must confront the lies and hold fast to the truth. Clues by the thousands reveal Europe's illustrious Celtic past. Castles, cathedrals, abbeys, and halls evidence an advanced civilization that flourished there more than 2,000 years ago and has just kept blossoming. Yet the myth that Europe was overrun by barbarians has been kept alive even by our own U.S. founders. Thomas Jefferson talked about barbarous ancestors, a term now blatantly contradicted by archaeological discoveries. Our ancestors were freedom-loving residents of Europe who were under constant attack by invaders. Why? Because they were an advanced civilization. Today we see this firsthand because we're facing the same assaults and disinformation that our ancestors have faced for so long. Look no further than the attack on Ukraine to see Caesar wannabes using the same lies, devastating attacks, invasions, and enslavements that Caesar and other imperialists used relentlessly on Europeans. Conquerors are still with us today, and they don't shrink back from slaughter, torture, and destruction any more today than they did 2,000 years ago. Caesar's playbook is being used in the 21st century as strategically as it was in the year zero. Russia's invasion of Ukraine uses the same tactics of rape, murder, plunder, terror, and deception. Lies are still at the tip of the invader's sword. Deception, how to extract threads of truth from the massive cobwebs of deceit. Women have been turned into men. Grand alcoves that once held statuesque women now contain an ill-proportioned crucifix. The word saint now awkwardly wedges in front of many original place names. Religion has taken over the secular, and that has happened again and again. That takeover affects everything imaginable, including imagery and names. We're convinced that the examples that we're showing you are commemorations with no religious significance. They are tributes to heroes in the same way we put up war memorials today. The reason that we automatically associate them with religion is because religion has claimed credit for everything and everyone so insistently for so long. How to find truth. Here's one approach. Assume that everything the victor says is false, that the conquerors claim a civilization that is not theirs. Assume that invaders have claimed, renamed, or covered over everything and everyone. Let's look at this in terms that we all know. We'll start with a common denominator. How did every town in Celtic Europe look at the time of the Christian conquest? What were the most basic elements of a Celtic village? Unquestionably, the architectural 
jewel of the town set at the edge of the central marketplace, and that was the fest hall, open to all, where everyone gathered. The fest hall and marketplace, these are the constant remnants of the old Celtic public domains, the cornerstones of Celtic culture. All across Celtic lands in Europe and the British Isles, public fest halls filled with celebrants on feast days. Everyone could calculate when feast days occurred, regardless of where they lived. They just looked up into the sky and knew it was the solstice or the equinox. Regardless of where in Europe they gathered or what fest hall they attended, people knew that the wine would flow, music would play, food would abound. How did the Christian conquest change this scene? When the Celts were in charge, the halls welcomed everyone. After the Christians invaded, the churches excluded everyone who objected to being subservient, who would not bow down. The church state purged those who would not acquiesce to Christianity's new white male master-servant mandates. Family came first for Celts, but under Christian rule, Celts were forced to serve an unseen ruler above their family. The Christians distorted aspects of Celtic life. Here's what I mean. Celts venerated their heroes. So Christians took that custom and twisted veneration into worship. They morphed respect into obedience. Christians bent the focal point of Celtic life from family toward one God alone. Anyone who resisted became a heathen, an enemy to be destroyed. With the difference between resident Celts and conquering Christians in mind, sometimes the Christian story just doesn't fit over the Celtic imagery too well. And sometimes the Christian deception is clumsy. Here's one instance. The Celts were passionate about exquisite crafting, especially for the fest halls. The Christians, well, their heart was not always in it. They often had to carry out orders against others to keep their own family safe from harm. The one glaring difference between resident Celts and conquering Christians is the way they treat women. Whenever women are depicted in imagery, we can be pretty sure that Celts are preserving it. Christians surely would have beheaded, defaced, or destroyed it, because that's what they've done ever since Constantine told them to take women out of the picture in the fourth century. When a woman is shown holding a sword, we're even more certain that it's Celtic. Women served men, and the invasion was man's work under Christian church-state rule. What about when a woman is shown with her arms up, surrounded by clouds, and those clouds have individual faces in them? It's reasonable to assume that these are portraits of women who have been killed in the Christian conquest. Why? Because conquerors count their victories in the bodies of women they kill. Invaders are doing that in Ukraine today, just as they've always done. In the past, invaders counted success in the numbers of women burned as witches under heresy laws. By stark, clear, and repeated contrast, it has always been the Celts who honor the memory of their women with heroic tributes. For centuries, witch hunts and witch burnings were prevalent under the church state. It's safe to say that tens of thousands of women died in this way. Another ancient Celtic tradition can also help with recognizing Celtic memorials to women. Gold. Gold stands out as Celtic. The Celts traditionally included gold jewelry in Iron Age burial chambers. And later, Celts painted gold crowns on the heads of their heroes, both men and women. If you see gold crowns and gilded clothing on statues and paintings of women, 
you can be fairly confident that you're looking at a Celtic tribute. Christians would not revere women in this way. On gravestones, in alcoves on buildings, in secular altars and chapels, these are places we can expect to find Celtic tributes to heroes. But there are many other ways the Celts keep memories of their heroes alive, by naming both personal and place names, foods, cafes, poetry, heroic epics in particular, book covers, Holland breeds new tulips in honor of Ukraine, roses, grapes. As we search for more signs of truth that have survived the Christian conquest, we ask that you keep your eyes open too. What do you detect from your ancestral past? You no longer need to be ashamed of barbarian forebearers. Like you, they treasured their family and nature above all, and they celebrated with family on feast days. In what ways have they kept a true memory of your ancestral past alive?